Okay, so this TP, we've, um, you're probably very familiar with ATP right now. Um, the important thing to know here is that um, ATP is aden um, adenine uh, triphosphate, and the phosphate groups that contain a lot of um, energy in those bond. So when that phosphate-phosphate bond is broken, we get energy that is released. When that bond is broken, it's going to release that phosphate group and it will become ADP. Think of ADP as a battery that has been drained and needs to be recharged by becoming ATP in order to be used for energy again in the cell. There are three different mechanisms that bodies use or cells use to create this vital ATP, which is the energy that the cell must run on. The first mechanism is substrate level phosphorylation. This occurs when a phosphate group is transferred from some other molecule and it gets put on ADP to create ATP. The second method is oxidative, um, oxidative phosphorylation. This is when the phosphate is added to ADP, but this is uh, done through a series of um, oxidation reduction reactions that occur doing, during a cellular respiratory pathway. We see this, um, for example, in the electron transport chain, which is the last step in the cellular respiration process inside the cell. We also have a method of, uh, not in our bodies, but in a lot of autotrophs, we have photophosphorylation. This is when phosphate groups are able to be added to ADP in order to make ATP using energy collected from sunlight. There are three metabolic strategies that we see cells use in order to get the energy that they need to make ATP. The first is aerobic cellular respiration, which in a nutshell is glycolysis followed by the citric acid cycle and finally ending up with the electron transport chain. With aerobic cellular respiration, um, this requires oxygen and oxygen is actually used as the final electron acceptor in the process.